This is a Volkswagen Golf, a sensible family hatchback. But it's also a 320 horsepower, turbocharged, all-wheel drive weapon with launch control and now even a drift mode. Woohoo! is it? This is the eighth generation of Golf, but only the fifth to wear an R badge. And the latest recipe is getting familiar now. A two litre turbocharged engine connected to a seven speed flappy paddle gearbox and clever all wheel drive, then all draped in this trademark blue paint. For 40,000 quid, welcome to the most powerful road going Golf ever made. What does it look like? It's a bit of a poke in the eye so far as golfs go. I mean, even the hot ones used to be subtle, but this one, double decker wing, big diffuser, quad exhausts, blue brake calipers, badges, skirts, silver mirrors. I mean, who designed this? Michael Bay? There is a lot going on. What's the engine? It's the latest evolution of an engine that Volkswagen's been plumbing into hot golfs for decades now. It's got a bigger turbo and higher pressure fuel injection, and that means that you get 316 brake horsepower and 310 pounds-feet of torque from just two litres. And yet it'll still do 40 miles to the gallon if you're being well behaved. What does it weigh? The official curb weight is 1,551 kilos, which is a lot for a hatchback, but this one's got all-wheel drive and clutch packs and a dual-clutch gearbox, so maybe that's to be expected. Let's see what the truth says on the scales. Now, it should be 1,551 kilos. This one, with barely any fuel on board, is 1,507. You can always depend on a Golf to be predictable. How roomy is it? On the whole, the Golf has not forgotten how to golf, though these are seats way too thick and they really do eat into your rear leg room. But you can solve that by specking your Golf R as an estate. And you can't do that with its rivals from Audi, BMW or Mercedes. Will I get along with the tech? Predictably, it's a bit of a pain because, as you may know, Volkswagen recently lost its mind and created a gesture-controlled and touch-sensitive interior before its processors were up to the job of keeping up with Tesla. And the result is an infotainment system that just doesn't belong in a 40 or 50 thousand pound car. It might be enough to put you off the Golf entirely. At least for the R, you get an R button on the steering wheel, which takes you straight into race mode and shortcuts the screen to where all the driving settings live. You don't get that in a Golf GTI. How fast is it? OK, let's get scientific on your R. This is quite complicated to set up, actually. Let's imagine you've just pulled up at your red light and you're ready to go. First, into sport mode on the gearbox. That's simple enough. Then hit the R button on the steering wheel. We're in race mode, good but the Golf R won't allow me to activate its launch control until we turn the ESC off. And that really couldn't be simpler, could it? First, we have to dive into the vehicle menu in the touchscreen. And then through a variety of sub-menus and spinning around this graphic of a Golf that isn't even a proper Golf R, we get to brakes and then ESC system. Of course, the lights won't have gone green yet. Activated and finally, ESC Sport is, it tells me, off on the dashboard. Launch control, eh? What genius invention. Anyway, foot hard down on the brake. Nail the throttle, launch control active, 4,000 RPM. Go! Wow! What a rocket ship! Okay, that's 60 already. That's taken no time at all. It really squats down as it sets off. I think that helps the Golf fast traction. Slurs the changes through. I mean, we only need a 0 to 100 time, but I'm curious. Got a bit of straight to use up, that's 130, 135, come on, show me 140, it's there, 145, 150 indicated and I'm going to brake, that's enough for me, that's enough. Brakes are really good actually, it's super stable, oh, I could have left that later, I apologise for being a wuss. 
According to the spec sheet, the Golf R should hit 62 miles per hour in 4.7 seconds. How fast was it? My goodness. Nought to 60, I've had to read that again, I couldn't believe my eyes. Nought to 60 in 4.3 seconds. That's 0.4 seconds quicker than Volkswagen claims. And we haven't got any tire warmers here. We've got no glue sprayed on the surface. It's 14 degrees outside, it's pretty mild. Okay, it's dry, but 4.3 in a Golf, nought to 100 miles an hour. Again, 10.37 seconds. It's absolutely uncanny. And a quarter mile, again. 12.81 seconds, that's potty, at 110.8 miles an hour. There's a lot of conspiracy theories on the internet, and I'm not normally one for conspiracy theories, but people are saying they don't believe this Golf R has just 320 horsepower as claimed. They're saying it's more. And after those numbers, I can believe it. What's it like on a motorway? This is where the Golf R just morphs back into a Golf. 70 miles an hour, 2,000 RPM. It's perfectly normal. There's no sense whatsoever that this is a car that, with a few prods of a touchscreen, could absolutely take a Porsche Cayman's trousers down. Right, so we know it's decent on a British motorway. What about a German motorway? Top lane, here we go. Yep, I'm pretty confident that Volkswagen spent some time developing the Golf R on an autobahn because here we are coming up towards 140 miles an hour. That's twice the legal limit on a motorway in Britain. And it feels like I'm barely stretching its legs. And because this one has the performance pack, it switches off the 155 mile an hour limiter and keeps going all the way to 168 in a Golf. Perfectly stable. It's a really good, fast cruiser. What's the gimmick? Yes, the latest Golf R's real party trick is drift mode. And no, as you'd expect, it's not as simple as just smashing a big button marked drift with a smiley face and then looking out the side window. First, you have to spend 2,000 quid on something called the R Performance Pack. This doesn't actually change any hardware under the skin, it just gives you a few new lines of code that unlock a Nürburgring setting in here and the drift mode, which tells the car to lob power at the outside rear wheel and kick the back end out. And I'm not sure the car really wants you to drift. I mean, look at this disclaimer here. The drift driving profile is intended solely for private roads or racetracks. It should only be used by someone with appropriate driving skills. Are you really sure? You want to activate drift? Yes, activate. We've got a slightly damp surface. I think we've given the car all the help we possibly could. Let's see what happens. So build up a bit of speed, turning hard, foot hard down. Back comes round, and then as soon as you catch it, it thinks, whoa, I think he's losing control. As Soon as I put the left hand steering in there, it felt like the car was thinking, oh, I think he's losing control. I better catch it for him. Strange, let's have a go again. It's strange. Yes, you do get a slight drift, slightly longer on there, but the second you start to feel like the superhero, it's like the car's saying, mm, I think I better take over here, sunshine. Weirdly, even when you put the Golf R in drift mode, the stability control is still on. A slight admission, perhaps, it's for people with more ambition than talent. Drift mode gives you a drift, bit of understeer there. It gives you a drift, but it doesn't give you the kind of super duper hero power slide that you might have been expecting. Once you've dived back into the touchscreen and fully turned the ESC off, it's much happier to skid. Right, I tell you what, one more attempt, no tire mercy. Just how big a drift will this Golf R really do? Oh, there we go, there we go. That's the biggest one yet, and I think we'll call that a day. Does it sound any good? Not really. And this Golf R has no excuses because it's fitted with an optional Akrapovic exhaust. It's made of titanium. It costs £3,000. And that's quite a lot 
just to save seven kilos in weight. Problem is, the latest factory noise regulations and anti-particulate filters have kiboshed the angry pops and bangs and just muffled the noise. And that's why, when you select R mode, the Golf R actually plays fake engine noise through the speakers. What's it like in a corner? Well, it's very much like a normal Golf. Yep, it's done it again. This is what the Honda Civic Type R and the Hyundai i30N really struggle to do. They're always straining at the leash, whereas the Golf is really quite content and happy to behave. That's why half the world thinks it's the most boring hot hatch in the universe, and the other half of the world seems to have bought one. And we should note that the ride, oh, for a hot hatch, it's exceptional. But this particular Golf R is kind of cheating again, thanks to the options list, because it's been fitted with 895 pounds worth of adaptive dynamic chassis control suspension. And that means that if I pop into the touchscreen, because obviously I have to go into the touchscreen again, then look at this, look at the range of adjustment I've got through race and sport and into comfort. It's no wonder that even when we took this thing round the cobblestone test course of our secret Top Gear tested facility, it was still unflappably comfortable. What about if you're late for something? Well, the Golf R is always, always looking after you. And that means that, yeah, you might think it's a bit stale, a bit boring, a bit too similar to the old one. But what that drift mode hardware does with the clutch packs at the back, it just makes where the car can send the drive a bit more adaptive, a little bit more playful. So I'm not in drift mode right now. In fact, I've saved all the settings into my favorite individual mode. This is how I like my Golf R set up. And as you can see, every now and again, I just have to catch the car. I'm involved in this. It's not like the old generation of Volkswagen hot hatches where when you really got to the limit, all they wanted to do was understeer and go home for a sulk. And as a result, we arrive at, well, probably the most fun Mark 8 Golf. The GTI, not sure about the club sport, it doesn't deserve that name, but the Golf R, yeah, this is a proper bit of kit. What's the verdict? I mean, it's a good hot hatch, this, but is it a truly, truly great one? Hmm. See, for me, the ultimate hot hatch is the perfect all-rounder. And while this is very well built and spacious and has a huge amount of performance, the interior tech is too fiddly, and when you use all that performance, it doesn't shout an exciting noise or make you laugh out loud in glee. And this automatic gearbox, it's standard, but it won't let me hold onto the gears when I want to. It auto up changes, it auto kicks down. Volkswagen, stop being such control freaks. And there's no getting away from the fact that 40,000 pounds is a heck of a lot for a Golf, and that's before options. But of course, a Golf R is the king of the cheap finance lease deal. So a quick browse on the internet and you'll probably find one that's cheaper than a phone contract. Where you'll really respect the Golf R is if you want a car that's just a car 90% of the time. And then when you're on the right piece of road and the mood takes you, you can pretty much break the land speed record. As an all wheel drive, all weather, any day of the week, any level of talent daily driver, the Golf R is unbelievably effective.